Princess Diana gifted her jewels to her sons so that their future wives could one day wear them, but who's wearing what? Meghan Markle, 37, has been dubbed the next Princess Diana as an advocate of humanitarian causes and campaigner of women's rights. Shortly after it was announced that Meghan and Prince Harry are expecting their first child together, Meghan was spotted wearing yellow gold butterfly earrings that once belonged to Diana. The earrings, unseen for 32 years, were paired with the former prince's gold bracelet and worn to Admiralty House in Sydney during their tour in Australia. Diana first wore the earrings during her own royal tour to Canada with Prince Charles in May 1986 when Harry was just 18 months old. Before her death in 1997, Diana wrote a letter of wishes alongside her will to divvy up her estate to her loved ones. She requested that one quarter of the value of her pounds 21 million estate was to be given to her 17 godchildren with the remaining three quarters to be handed to her sons William and Harry, the Daily Mail reported. Within this, was her striking jewelry collection. Diana wrote, I would like you to allocate all my jewelry to the share to be held by my sons so that their wives may, in due course, have it or use it. Prince William initially looked after the collection and in recent years the brothers have divided up what remains of it. As Diana's first daughter-in-law, Kate Middleton, 36, was first to be seen sporting her jewels with the sapphire and diamond engagement ring given to her by William, 36, when he proposed in Kenya in 2010. The ring is an oval salon sapphire surrounded by 14 diamonds and set in 18 karat white gold. Diana chose the £300,000 ring from a tray of a dozen presented by the royal jeweller Gerard after dinner with the Queen at Windsor Castle. At the time of his engagement, William said he had picked his mother's ring as a way of making sure my mother didn't miss out on today and the excitement. The brothers have also adapted some of her jewelry in a move to modernize it for their wives. Harry too wanted to ensure that Diana was somehow represented in his wife's engagement ring and he included two diamonds from her oval Sri Lankan sapphire necklace. The diamonds sit either side of a large diamond that he sourced from Botswana to make sure she's with us on this crazy journey together. Meghan added, it's so important to me to know that she's a part of this with us. A square-cut aquamarine cocktail ring that was given to Diana by her friend, Lucia Flecka de Lima to celebrate the day her divorce became final in 1996, now has a new meaning as Harry gifted the item to Meghan for their wedding day on 19th of May. Meghan wore the stunning ring with her silk Stella McCartney evening wedding dress at Frogmore House adding a splash of color to her outfit. Another piece adapted by the young royals was a pair of earrings from Diana's most famous collections. The jewels were a wedding present from Crown Prince Fahd known as the Saudi Suite and including a sapphire watch, earrings, bracelet, ring and necklace. After William gifted the earrings to Kate after their engagement in 2010 she refashioned them into drop earrings from chunky sapphire studs surrounded by ten round diamonds. Diana had famously worn the earrings for Harry's birth in 1985. The pathologist who examined the Princess Diana has said she would have survived the car crash that killed her if she had been wearing a seat belt. Dr. Richard Shepard maintains she would have walked away on the fateful night and been alive to see the her sons Harry and William get married. Princess Diana died on August 31, 1997, after suffering fatal injuries in a car crash in the Pont de l'Almero tunnel in Paris. Her companion Dottie Fade and driver and security guard Henry Paul were also killed in the crash while her bodyguard Trevor Rees Jones survived with horrific injuries. The car was traveling at up to 70 mp twice the speed limit and Paul was three times over the drink drive limit. Dr. Shepard was a home office pathologist when he was called on to carry out the autopsy on Diana, one of the 23,000 or so he has performed in his career. I wish I could say she would have died whatever happened, but the fact is, if she had worn her seatbelt she would have been here for Prince William and Harry's weddings, he told the Daily Mail. Had she been strapped and she would have walked away with a black eye or maybe a broken arm, but nothing more. Instead, 
She was hurtling forward with the weight of one and a half elephants, and the human body is not designed to suffer those forces. Dr. Shepard was a pathologist who carried out post-mortem examinations when 35 were killed in the Clapham Rail disaster in 1988. He also examined the drowned bodies after the Marquianus tragedy in which a Thames pleasure boat sank with the loss of 51 lives in 1989. His experience also includes working on the terror attacks on 9-11 in Bali in 2002 and the London 7-7 bombings in 2005. He also carried out the post-mortems on young mother Rachel Nichol, murdered on Wimbledon Common in 1992, and Stephen Lawrence, the black teenager stabbed to death in a racial attack a year later. Dr. Shepard said he was inundated with questions about Diana but has refused to reveal intimate details. People asked, was she beautiful? Was she peaceful? Was she pregnant? He said, I always made sure I never said anything in all the cases of public interest I was involved with that hadn't already appeared in the press. Pathologically there was no evidence that Princess Diana was pregnant, but some women say they know they were pregnant from the moment of conception. Was she one of those? At the inquest into Diana's death, accident investigator Anthony Reed said he could almost guarantee the couple would have survived had they been strapped in in a car traveling within the speed limit. Hunters are convinced Meghan Markle is pregnant with twins after bookmaker Coral took a sudden rush of bets on her giving birth to two babies. Coral has cut the odds on Meghan Markle having twins when she gives birth next spring from 8-1 to 2-4-1 after taking a flurry of bets over the last 24 hours. The Duchess of Sussex is also 51 to have triplets, while a boy is the favorite at 10-11 in the gender betting. Coral's John Hill said. Many punters feel as though Meghan and Harry will have their hands full with not one but two babies next year. We have seen a rush of bets since their announcement for the couple to have twins. Coral is also taking bets on the name of Meghan and Prince Harry's first child, with James a huge early favorite at 7-1. Other notable names receiving bets are Victoria at 8-1, Thomas at 12-1, Diana and Elizabeth both at 16-1, and Philip at 21. Outside bets include Donald and Kanye, after Donald Trump and Kanye West, at 151, while Theresa, after Prime Minister Theresa May, is a huge long shot at 201. Mr. Hill added, over 60% of all the bets we have taken so far have been for James who is the early favorite. But if it is a girl, Victoria, Olivia and Diana are the names which are being heavily backed. On Monday. Bookmakers predicted punters could pile in more than pound six million in wagers as speculation over the name of Meghan and Harry's baby reaches fever pitch. Betting intelligence website www.bookmakers.tv said the rush to place bets will outstrip that witnessed with all three of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's children. Such is the popularity of Harry and Meghan royal fans will rush to speculate on the name arrival date and much more in volumes massively eclipsing the estimated three million pounds registered for the entirety of the Cambridge family. Spokesman Alex Costin said, Meghan and Harry's popularity is off the charts and their good news will send the public into a royal betting frenzy of epic proportions. Fans are so keen to speculate on every aspect of the baby and millions will be riding on the name, arrival date and sex among many other predictions. He added, Bookies will be desperate the pair go for an outside choice of name as if they follow tradition, royal watchers will cash in like never before. Betfair spokeswoman Katie Bayless said, at this stage Diana, Arthur, and Alice, which was favorite at different stages for Kate and William's babies, are the 12-1 front runners. However, with months until the baby is born, those odds will shorten, change and other names will come to the forefront, so watch this space. Jessica Bridge of Ladbrokes added, with Meghan's USA roots it would be remiss of bookmakers to rule out an American moniker featuring somewhere. Meghan is currently on her first global royal tour with Harry, and has been showing off her pregnancy glow during their first visits in Australia. Their 16-day trip will see them watch the Invictus Games, and then fly to Fiji, 
Donga, and New Zealand, before returning to Australia for their final stop. Bye.